95% complete, so the team know that these features haven't been lost in collection or in preparation. Put simply, she never possessed them. Unlike the other fossils found in the ancient Messel pit, she is not a lemur. She must be a member of another group. Could she be in a group connected to us? In the beginning, we all thought we are just dealing with a certain kind of uh, fossil lemur. And uh, step by step, our ideas changed and more and more uh, anthropoid uh, traits uh, turned up and uh, now we are really thinking of relationships uh, to uh, anthropoids, to hominoids finally, and at the end to man. The team have shown that Ida is not on the Lima line of evolution. But is she on the human line? Jörn and the team want to look to the forests of East Africa and our closest relative, the chimpanzee. If we look at the anthropoid primates, we have to go to Africa to, to look at chimpanzees, to see something that's more advanced, more specialized in a way that's a little bit more like human uh, traits. It's wonderful. You can compare them and you can compare their skeletal features with, with Ida. Ida shares the classic primate characteristics with chimps. They are quadrupeds, walking on all fours, as she would have done in the ancient forest. Strikingly, their hands and feet are almost identical, five fingers and five toes. And her opposable big toe, the trait that first identified her to Yearn as a primate, is mirrored in the chimpanzees. It enables both of them to grasp tree branches and climb Looking at modern-day chimpanzees and, and looking at the foot of a chimpanzee and, and looking at especially the ankle bones, they are so much the same as in the fossil. At this stage of the investigation, Ida is showing some basic human-like characteristics in her skeleton. But her body proportions and the length of her fingers are nonetheless lemur-like. The picture is still unclear. It is, broadly speaking, a lemur monkey. How lemur it is and how monkey it is is what we're trying to figure out. And so it looks to me like it ties higher primates, apes and monkeys, into something in the Eocene that's clearly more primitive. are looking for any clear evidence in Ida's anatomy that links her to us. This is not an easy task. Establishing these links has always been a problem since the theory of evolution was first proposed. A hundred and fifty years ago, Charles Darwin explained the incredible diversity of life on Earth in a new way. There are billions of species on the planet, but each was not individually and uniquely created. New species appeared as they adapted to a changing environment. At the time, Darwin's proposal was controversial. He argued that monkeys, apes and ourselves have a common ancestor. That ancestor, we now know, must have lived hundreds of millions of years ago. Darwin's idea was revolutionary, and he was ridiculed by many in Victorian society. 
Where is the proof, his critics demanded? Where is the half-ape, half-man fossil that links us to ape-like ancestors? And where is the even more ancient fossil that links apes and ourselves to the rest of the animal kingdom? Darwin predicted that such creatures must have existed, but he never could produce the fossil evidence. It was missing. Don Johansson is famous as the man who found what the world had been waiting for, one of those missing links. In the Ethiopian desert in 1974, as a young man, he uncovered the fossilized bones of an astonishing creature. He nicknamed it Lucy. Incredible. Just remarkable. Well, what we're looking at here is about 40% of a single skeleton, of course, the Lucy skeleton, uh, which I found in 1974. And what's astonishing about it is we have parts of the upper limbs, the arms, we have parts of the lower limbs, both the thigh and the shin bone, parts of the vertebral column, the backbone, and uh, even the ribs. And when we mount her like this, when we make a uh, display like this, one gets the impression of the body. Lucy looked like an ape, but she was beginning to show human characteristics in her skeleton. She turned out to be an extraordinary link in our own evolution. Finding Lucy, of course, it's a fantastic fossil that shows uh, the upright position, the standing position, the walking of the first human-like ancestors. Uh, so so she's, she's a hallmark because of she, she walks like us. One of the things that Lucy gives us is a, a real picture of what her pelvis looked like. Uh, the pelvis is obviously one of the most crucial anatomical regions in the body for the way animals get around. For example, uh, if we look at a, an animal that walks on all fours, a quadruped, and in this case it's a chimpanzee, you can see that the hip bones, so one we feel just here, uh, as you can see are facing forwards. Whereas in humans, like ourselves, they have been rotated around so that the muscles on the back are now on the side. They're no longer facing backwards and they stabilize the hip so that when we walk we walk as a striding gait if you watch watch a chimpanzee walk bipedally it walks like this because it's always collapsing so animals that walk on all fours like chimpanzees and Ida have a very different hip bone to animals that walk on two like us but it was the shape of Lucy's bones that revealed an amazing fact about our own evolution. If you look at Lucy's pelvis right here, we've reconstructed this side for the mirror image, it's not identical to a modern human. But clearly, it's shorter, broader, and these blades, the hip bones, have been rotated around. So this is a clear adaptation to upright walking on the ground. Lucy had ape characteristics. She was hairy, like a chimpanzee. But she also had human characteristics. She walked on two legs, just as we do. Lucy was the half-ape, half-man species that Darwin predicted. But where was the link, millions of years earlier, between us and the rest of the animal kingdom? At this stage of the investigation, Ida's skeleton is showing a mixture of characteristics from the non-human and human line. This unusual combination is bringing Jörn and the team closer to deciding whether she is related to us. This jumble of different characters is very, very exciting because you see things that are more anthropoid-like. You see things that are certainly extremely primitive. You see things that maybe should be more like a lemur. And, and you see all these characters in the same skeleton. And you need to try to explain evolution in a new way, the early evolution of primates in a new way. because.